So you've been, actually, you've been around the project a lot longer than me. How would you describe OpenStack governance and how it differs from, say, you know, everyone compares with the kernel, so maybe we should get that done, done first. What do, we, what do we do and how is it different and how is that good? All right, so we try to be very egalitarian. We, um, we do the opposite of the benevolent dictator thing. Um, we do not want a benevolent dictator at all. Um, and we do everything we can to try to prevent one from happening, um, Monty Taylor notwithstanding. Um, and <laughs> right. Yeah. Apparently he's Willy Wonka, um, is, is what I'm hearing from the audience. Uh, so, so at any rate, um, a lot of the CI system that Michael mentioned earlier, um, a lot of our government uh, governance structures and things like that, they're all around, designed around the idea of um, egalitarianism. Uh, we want anybody to be able to join the project and pitch in and start writing code, start um, doing reviews, and have their, uh, have their work all go through the same process no matter who they are. Um, and so I, I think that's, and, and, and actually there, there have been some uh, articles in the, in the press like, oh, well, OpenStack would be great if it only had a benevolent dictator. And, uh, and we tend to think that these, you know, people who write articles like that aren't really paying attention. They're not understanding what we're trying to do in the community. Um, so I think that's the, the biggest difference uh, between us and uh, the Linux kernel. There's certainly a lot of voting, right? So every patch is voted on. Uh, there's two governance bodies, the technical committee and the board, and they're both elected. Um, and so on. What's the difference between the technical committee and the board? How would you explain that? Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> a light <line. laughs> Yeah. <but laughs> the, the line can be blurry sometimes. Um, so uh, they're, they're, the, the board, the, there's a foundation um, that owns the, uh, the trademarks um, related to OpenStack. And uh, it's sort of this um, it's actually a trade organization. So all of the companies who have uh, developers working on OpenStack, they join the foundation uh, and they help uh, sponsor. Uh, the development is still out on the edges, but um, things like uh, our um, twice yearly summits uh, and conferences, um, there's uh, a lot of central coordination of marketing, um, of course, the, the issues and policies uh, around dealing with the trademarks, all of those things are handled by the foundation. And so that foundation has a board of directors. And, um, and so what we try to do is get people on that board who, uh, who are in that space, people who um, are, are thinking strategically about how all the companies who are collaborating on this project are going to work together and, uh, and those kinds of issues. Um, the board is explicitly in the bylaws uh, prohibited from making technical decisions about the project itself, um, which I think is actually really cool. So, you know, we, there is this concern, you know, if we, if we have this body with, with people on it who are appointed by big companies and what if they start saying, oh, well, now you have to use Java for everything. I mean, that would be terrible. It right? would be horrible. Yeah. So uh, to protect against that sort of thing, uh, the bylaws explicit, explicitly say that technical decisions are um, the purview of the technical committee, which is an entirely elected board uh, in the community. Uh, and so the, the people who, um, who are eligible to vote in the elections to elect the technical committee are the contributors to OpenStack itself. Uh, if you um, submit a patch and it gets merged, uh, you'll get a ballot um, for the next election. And so generally that, that board is composed of um, developers or people who are really active in the project. Um, not, you know, not necessarily hackers, um, you know, uh, folks working on documentation, um, things like that. Uh, but basically you end up with people who are, who are really working on the project in all of the, the senses of that word, um, getting elected to the technical committee uh, where decisions that affect uh, the project at a technical level are made. So I hope that sort of illustrates the different kinds of um, 
bodies mm -hmm. that so those two are. So, so question from the audience. We've described the board and the technical committee, but we also have these things called project technical leads. What are they? Um, do we have any in the room? Yes. Robert's one, but we can pretend he's not. Right. So, <laughs> oh, uh, right, Devananda. Uh, hey, if you're a PTL, raise your hand. Uh, so, the. Uh, <coughs> Yes. I, I, oh, you did. Sorry. That wasn't a demonstration. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Raise your hand like this. Um, <laughs> so um, uh, OpenStack is, is uh, composed of a lot of individual projects. And each of those projects has its own community of developers. And we, we try to keep everything consistent between them so that um, people can move around uh, fairly easily and, and we don't end up with this sort of balkanized set of projects but still you know you're gonna have a people a group of people who are interested in in working on um, compute versus networking and things like that so so you end up with with a, a group of um, you know a set of developers who are really focused on, on projects that set of developers is again eligible to vote you mentioned there was a lot of voting right mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Um, so they're eligible to vote in an election um, every, every six months to elect a leader from among themselves uh, for that project. So the, um, that's called the, the, either the, it's probably called the program technical lead at this point. That's but, probably true. Yeah. Um, it's sort of interchangeable. Anyway, the technical lead for, for each of the programs, um, is, they, they sort of, they're the closest thing to a benevolent dictator, but really only within their project. And it's, it's, not, it's not the sort of thing, um, it, it's, it's more, it's, it's, sorry? A lot of responsibility, not a lot of power. There you go, a lot of responsibility, not a lot of power. Yeah, it's, it's a leadership role and it's a tie-breaking role if needed, but the expectation is not that this person is the project and they get to decide everything. No, the, the, the real power in terms of of deciding what code gets merged comes from the, the core review team, which is, again, uh, a group of people that uh, is, uh, is built up from the, 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 the developers who are focused on each project. This time it's not really election, an election, it's not a formal election, and um, the, the core review team for each project is... Uh, it's gen yeah, it's... So that was everybody who's core. So each project has a set of people who can approve code to merge, and they're called cores. Uh, Florian, I've seen you, but I'll get to you in a second, okay? Um, so we have these people who do business stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And we have this technical committee who do technical stuff. And then there's these PTLs who have no power, but just beg you to work on stuff. Do you think there's any value in having technical people on the board? If they're just doing business stuff, should the techies just ignore them? Right. So um, we... We do have a couple of uh, technical people on the board, and so it's, it's hard to think about this um, in the abstract. I think about it very specifically, and I think some of the most active and, uh, and really passionate people on the board uh, come from a technical background. And um, I, think it's, I think it's really useful. I, I, I mean, I, I would not agree with the assertion that technical people can't think strategically about the project, which I think if you're saying technical people don't belong on a board of directors is what you're saying. So, um, so yeah, I, I, I think there's, I, I mean, there's the theoretical possibility that you'd get somebody with, uh, with tunnel vision, somebody who can see the forest for the trees um, on the board, but uh, I think the, the, the people that we have on the board um, are really good at thinking strategically about the project as a whole. Thinking about, you know, um, what are the use cases, what are the business cases for this project, and how should the, the community as a whole be dealing with those things? Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to interrupt and stop the questioning for a second and say, th th this to me is an important distinction. I've kind of got a bugbear at the moment. Um, so I meet a lot of people who say, well, Ceph is part of OpenStack, for example. And this is not true. Uh, so the Open, OpenStack community has spent a lot of time coming up with an open merit-based governance process. 
Most decisions are made by consensus or at least are debated, etc. And there are projects on the edge that don't conform with our expectations. So you can totally use Ceph with OpenStack. No one's going to stop you. It works fine. It's great. But it's, it, it is an important distinction that it is not governed in this way. So ultimately, things might happen that aren't in OpenStack's best interest, and we have no control over that because they're separate. Bruno, are you going to disagree with me? Mm -hmm. Okay. Because this Ceph might actually see another project and Swift uh, looks like a black sheep in the yeah. project. So it's, it's a long question, so I'm going to answer the question and, exp and explain the question as I go along, if that's okay. Um, so I said before in the introduction that originally there was a government body and a commercial entity and they had separate projects and they decided to work together at a Mexican restaurant. So NASA had a compute project called Nova which is what I work on. And Rackspace had an object storage system called Swift, which is uh, what Bruno's asking about, effectively. And those, those two projects decided to work together, and it's grown over time to include a bunch of other projects. And one of the fundamental reasons that Swift is a bit different from Nova is because they were separate projects when they started. Uh, Nova has kind of been used as the poster child for all the other projects. So Nova has a pluggable backend. We kind of don't specify what hypervisor you should use, for example. Sorry, did I say Nova's the compute project? Hopefully I did. Um, so you know, you can use Hyper-V if you want, or Xen, or you know, KVM, or whatever. And you know, we don't have a driver for every possible hypervisor, but we have a lot of drivers. Um, and Swift doesn't have this plugin layer, mostly because it wasn't a priority when Swift was first written. I have talked to people who say they are moving in that direction, but I don't work on Swift, so I don't want to commit them to something. Uh, I would suggest you have a sit down with John Dickinson and have a chat. John's at the conference. He's the Swift PTL and has been, has he been forever? Certainly for as long as I've been involved. I think so, yeah. Yeah. Um, and so he understands this history a lot better than I do. But I agree it is a difference and a difference that doesn't make me completely comfortable. Uh, like I, I can see, you know, a Nova style, there's a business logic layer and then kind of the actual bits stored on disk kind of driver layer. Yeah. Well, the erasure coding stuff is bringing in more of that because it's not bringing in arbitrary backends, it's bringing in different behaviors within the one code base. Uh, I think one other thing about Swift that's worth noting is that it's a full implementation of a whole bunch of logic, whereas Nova is an arbitrator for existing tools. KVM and Zen are existing hypervisors. Bare metal that we put in Nova, we're taking out because um, Nova's not meant to be implementing lots of complex logic. Yeah, so Nova is fundamentally a hypervisor management system, whereas Swift is a complete end-to-end -end solve this problem thing. Now, f How many objects do you have nowadays? Pardon? How many objects or subjects do you have nowadays? Not enough. How many open source object stores are there? I can think of three off the top of my head and one of them you shouldn't use because it's in the Nova code base. Um, <laughs> Okay, I feel like listing all the object stores is kind of boring, though. And Florian has been the world's most patient man and had a question, so fire it will. No, just a suggestion about the whole vanilla maintainer part. Uh -huh. I think one thing that's sort of <coughs> important about our PTLs is the fact that they are actually a dictator as in the sense of the Roman Republic, which means your term ends after six months and then you stand for re-election. So while it's a benevolent dictator position, it's not a benevolent dictator for life. And if you actually Mm -hmm. I think it's sort of an important distinction versus what other projects are doing, which may be fine, but OpenStack does it a different way. And it's, for me, it's always been something very important for the PTL world. Yeah, so for the video, Florian is saying that an important difference is that our PTLs are elected. It's not a position for life, which means that you know, they have an incentive to act in the best interests of commu the community and build a consensus and so on. Uh, to be honest, I can't think of a single time a PTL has just driven something through without discussing it with people. Like, cause it, mostly because I don't think it would work, right? Uh, unless they were going to do all of the coding for that thing by themselves. They and they'd still, yeah, they'd still need core reviewers to approve it, right? They can't just, well, they could, in theory, merge it unilaterally, but it would get reverted. Um, and they'd probably be unelected at that point. Um, 
So we have two more minutes. Is there another question? Yes, you there with a the nice hair. I can't even pronounce, what's the voting mechanism we use for elections? I can't even pronounce Concorset. Oh, um, I, I pronounced it. Uh, uh, so it's uh, Condorcet, uh, and we use the CIVS implementation of it from Columbia, uh, CIVS. Um, the question is who votes, and the answer is it depends on the election. Um, so, yeah, board elections, so the, the business types, it's... It's complicated, actually, right? Because there are tiers of, there are segregated sets of board seats. So Platinum Foundation members came and gave us a very large amount of money and do every year. So there's a set of seats that those guys get to vote for and then you know, gold members vote for their pool of seats. But then there's also a chunk of seats that are voted by, for by any individual member of the foundation, which can be anyone. You can just you'd go to web page and click sign me up. Uh, the technical elections, so technical committees, uh, PTLs, that kind of thing, you have to be an active technical contributor, which means uh, effectively you're a developer, but the bar is super low. It's like has landed one patch. So if you put in a... In, in here? Anita's going to tell me I'm a liar. Yes? Um, the uh, technical uh, uh, um, committee election, uh, the electorate has to have, for the one just passed, it was the two releases prior. So uh, for the uh, elections for Ice House, uh, it was uh, people who have a patch in a Grizzly and Havana. So that, for the PTL elections, uh, they had to have it in that uh, repo uh, that was associated with that program. And some programs have multiple repos. And for the technical committee, uh, it was everybody who had a, uh, a patch in uh, any of the uh, official open tech. Yeah, so basically you have to have a patch in a repo that's within, say, it's 12 months-ish. The bar is deliberately very low, but it does mean you've got skin in the game, right? So if you want to go and do a single gra one-line grammar fix to a doc, you're an ATC and you can vote. It's, um, it's also worth mentioning that um, you know, the, the system's optimized for developers because that's the bulk of who we're Yeah, there is with, an but, exceptions but, process. Yeah, uh, and, and we, yeah, we do uh, currently, we've, we've uh, granted ATC status to two people who are not developers. Um, uh, at least one is a user experience person. I, mean, I think they were both. The both user was, experience it person. Was the Horizon PTL who advocated for that, and the technical committee had to vote on that. It was a unanimous uh, agreement. Um, and they have uh, 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 active contributor status for two releases, uh, and then they can vote on their particular project, which, which was Horizon, as well as the technical committee election. We'd, we'd love to automatically identify. Um, you know, user experience folks, uh, usability testers, uh, folks like that. But um, we haven't figured out a way to do that yet. So this is the best we've come up with. And, and so the other thing we should say here is the reason we're kind of back and forth a little bit, apart from being disorganized, is because we keep changing the plan, because we keep optimizing it. So the exceptions thing, I think, was always allowed by the bylaws. But the first example was in the last couple of releases. And if we discovered, I feel like as a community, if we discovered we'd made a mistake, we would just fix the mistake. We're not particularly emotionally bound to the exact words in the bylaws at the moment. Although, Change specifically the changing the bylaws is a lot more work than just you know having the TC randomly say yes. Um, but yeah. One, one other thing I'll just, I'll just say. The other thing is, is that, we're, that any of these roles, we define the roles and the roles are not specific to people. So, so uh, I uh, run a couple of elections, but I, I played the role and anybody who is willing to play the role can run an election. You just have to step up and do it. So all, all of what we're talking about, um, everybody has different roles, but we're defining the roles as we go along, but anybody can play it mm -hmm. uh, as long as you just you get in there and Yeah. Uh, and you know, we were talking about project technical leads, and then we sneakily changed it to program technical leads. That's because we made up programs in the last six months because we thought we needed them. So you know, people still have this mental mapping to you know, a different meaning of the, word, of, of the letter P. Um, and people can also wear more than one hat, right? So I've, I'm a core reviewer on two projects. Apparently I was a core reviewer on three projects, but I didn't realize I was a core reviewer on the third, which I thought was pretty funny. Um, yeah, no, I didn't even realize I was an ironic core, which I thought was ironic. Um, and I sit on the TC, I'm an open stack ambassador, etc. There's nothing stopping me running from the board apart from the fact that I don't have time, right? So it's not like we say, oh, you're PTL, and therefore you're excluded from I don't know, being on the board, for example, we could t we totally let that happen. Um, 
So, yeah. It is a big board, and I think it's a lot of work to do right. Anyway, we have run over...